Hello and welcome to the last in the series of building a home recording studio from scratch. So it's been a really great experience for me to speak to um, lots of knowledgeable musicians um, and technicians to get some advice on how to build a simple but professional uh, recording studio at home. And I've also learned how it can save me money by being able to record demos at home um, and also work with others electronically as well. So today I will let you in on a bit of my EP recording process and show you how these skills have um, started to come in handy. Okay, so I'm going to set up a new project in Logic um, so I can compare two different versions of the same track. Basically, I've got two different producers to uh, do their own version of the same song, so now I'm going to use Logic to compare the two and give some feedback as to what I like best about them. Okay, so I'm opening my empty project um, and I'm going to have two um, different audio tracks coming in. So I'm going to click on two and create. Okay. All right, so um, I've got them on a USB stick, which is that one. And you can literally just drag the tracks in from the USB, so it's called Drummer Boy. And here's one version, so I'm just gonna drag that one into the first track. And the second one in. And I'm just going to drag it up to the start of bar one as well, so they're both at the same place, it's both starting point. And also I find it quite useful to be able to see the waves as well, so if you use these little tools at the bottom, you can see the sound waves a little bit better. If you want to go in closer, in more detail, you can go that way, and vice versa. If you want to see the whole track, you can go back the other way. When that's loaded in, I'm just going to check that each one is working. So I'm going to click on solo on the top track. So that means that I'm only listening to the very first one and not the one below. And I've got a noise coming out of that. That's all good. And then I'll solo the other one. And that one's coming through as well. Cool. All right, so I've got um, both tracks loaded into Logic now. So I'm going to, um, they're, they're sort of lined up as well so I can easily um, flip between the two. I'm going to listen to the top one first um, and see what I think of the first few bars and then have a listen to the next one down straight afterwards as well just so I can get a nice comparison of the difference. So here we go, I'm going to solo the top track which just means that that's the only one I'm going to hear. Press space. Cool, all right, so that's our first one. There's a little bit of reverb in there. It's quite a nice sound. So let's have a comparison of the second one, see if it's much different. So that one to me sounds quite a lot sort of drier. There's not as much effect on that one. Um, so, so far I like the top one better for that section just because this particular track, although a lot of my stuff is sort of a little bit rocky, this one's actually quite a, a light heart. It doesn't really mean all that much um, sort of song. It's quite pop, pop rock. So having those sort of extra effects in actually sort of suits the song quite well. Um, so, so far I quite like the one which is a bit reverby. So I'm going to move on to a different section now um, and just compare something that's a little bit more different. Okay, so I'm on a bridge now, so I'm going to listen. So this is where actually, if I was looking at the sound waves, it'd be a bit more obvious because you can see how it gets a bit more powerful. You get bigger shapes going on. Okay, so I'm going to then solo the top one and have a listen to the same bit. 
So straight away you can hear on that um, that second take, there's quite a lot of effects in the first part of that. Uh, on my voyage, you can out here, those echoes and um, all sorts of other stuff going on. Um, so again, sort of a bit more poppy. I'm not 100% sure whether I'd want all of that throughout the whole track. Um, but yeah, but there's certainly some bits in there that work quite well. So I'm going to skip along to the chorus now, which is coming up on that version. Okay, so let's find the chorus on the next bit. And the other track. Yeah, so again, that you know, that other version is a little bit drier sounding. Also, I think the vocals, the lead vocals, are a little bit quieter in that one as well. They seem to cut through a bit more in the other one. Um, so let's just have a listen to uh, the middle eight as well. I think. We'll have a look at. Uh, I just noticed there's some backing vocals in this verse. We're going to listen to that too. Cool, yeah, so we've got a level on the back and vocals on that one. And then there's a bit of an effect coming in as well um, as we go to the end. So let's see what the uh, top one's like. So yeah, so that one you can hear, it's really different. It's got quite a lot of effects going on on that one. Um, and like I said, although I think that it quite suits that track, I'm not sure I'd want that all the way through. I'd, maybe like at the moment, I'm sort of thinking a combination of the two. Okay, so I'm gonna compare um, the second verse now. Um, I'm gonna do that just by using the solo button, um, which is the little S here, and flitting between the two. And then you get a really clear idea of, of the difference between the two sounds. Um, so here we go. I'm going to start with the top one. So straight away you can hear that the uh, top one seems a much fuller sound. The second one is just a little bit drier in general as well. Um, so I think it'd probably be somewhere in the middle for me is where I'm thinking. I'm going to skip along to the uh, mid late section because there's like a really big note in that. Um, so I'm quite interested to hear what they've done with it. So let's move along. I think that's around bar 80. Yeah. So let's go from about here. Top one. <laughs> So that bit in particular, you can hear it's going for a much more sort of intimate sound on that one, the one that's a little bit more dry. And again, it's a sort of much bigger open sound on the top one. And uh, let's just listen out for the big note as well. Yeah, so both of them have done, gone for quite a big sound, but again, the top one is just that little bit bigger uh, sound-wise on, um, on the top one. Um, so I should probably say as well, normally when I'm listening back to things, I would use the headphones as well as a monitoring system so I can get a little bit more of a detailed uh, sound quality. Um, 
but you could also use uh, speakers that's what most people do which is really good especially if you've got you know more than one person that needs to listen as well um, but for the purpose of this so you can hear what I'm doing we're running it through the uh, computer speakers Right, so yeah, as you can see, it's a really good way of um, comparing quickly by flitting between both tracks and just seeing um, what sort of quali what quality of sound you've got um, when, you're, when you're comparing the same, same song. So I'm going to look at a different song now um, and I'm going to play around with some um, back and vocals and harmonies. Okay, so now I'm going to open up um, the next track, which is called Why. And um, for this one, there's going to be a lot more... Um, tracks coming in because I've got all the stems which is basically all of the different instruments um, that we've done uh, to compose the track um, are all on separate tracks so that then I can listen to them all separately um, and also add my own uh, backing vocals and harmonies in there as well when I'm playing around with ideas. So um, what I'm going to do is go into my browser and then into desktop and row stems and then this is all the stems for um, Y. So then if I highlight them all, you can click on the top one, you can press um, the shift button to get all of them. And then at the bottom right hand side, you've got add, so you can add. And then create new tracks, okay. And then da 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 da, -da. in they go. So they take a little while to, um, to load into Logic, so go and make a cup of tea. Okay, so I've just loaded everything in. Um, so I'm just going to just have a quick check that it works. It works. Great, so that, that's all working fine. So um, I know roughly where I want to try out some back and vocals. So I'm going to skip along straight to the bit um, where I want to lay some down. So it's around the... Yeah, so it's about there. So what I'm going to do is give myself uh, a bit of a lead in um, and I'm also going to create a separate track so you can do that just by double clicking below the one before and then you've got another audio track in there um, so then yeah so that should give me enough time before I want to start my first vocal so just make sure that you're clicking on um, the right track that you're about to record I'm just going to name this BV1. Okay, so remember to um, get your levels right before you start. Um, I've already done that, so we're gonna we're gonna crack straight on. Um, so I'm just gonna check I've got it in the right place on the track. Yep, that's fine. So it gives me a bit of a lead up to the chorus. I'm just gonna hit record and try a take. Okay, so that's my first one. I'm now going to stick a harmony on that one as well and see how that sounds. So I've just created a new track, so I'm going to do um, a harmony above what I've just done, uh, just to create a little bit more depth um, in this second chorus. So um, I've armed my track with an R, and then you can press R as a shortcut to record. So let's go for it again. See how awful that sounded? <laughs> so I'm going to solo this as well just so I can listen to what I've just done. Cool, so although it may not be pitch perfect, 
<laughs> um, actually, when it's in the mix, it's, it'll be fine um, to do that kind of thing. But um, just and also, it's just for playing around for ideas at the moment anyway. So if I was going back into the into a, a proper studio um, to record these parts, obviously those sort of things can be tidied up. But it's fine just to get down uh, some ideas. So I've got a two part there. I might see if um, I can think of one to go underneath as well, um, just to make it a bit fuller. Um, so I'm just listening back to those two tracks on their own. Okay, so I could put another one underneath there as well. Uh, so let's do that and see how that sounds. No input selected. Uh, inputs. Two. Okay. Let's try that. Okay, so I'm just going to have a quick listen back to those three harmonies and just check that they have the right effect. So just then I didn't solo the last one, so I've just done that. Now I can hear all three. Yeah, so I'm just going to bring the level of that low one up a bit because it doesn't cut through quite as much as the others. So that's on A. Just bring that up a little bit. And just check that mix again. So it's not perfect, but that's better. Gives me a better idea of whether it's sounding right. Um, cool. So I'm now just going to check it with the rest of the track and see how that sounds in context. So I'm going to unsolo those three and just go back and listen to that section. a bit loud in comparison to the rest of the track so I'm going to bring them down in the mix a bit more. Let's check that one more time. Okay, so I'm just going to listen back to those takes that I've just done um, and trim them up a bit, so tidy up the places where I've sort of coughed and things like that, so it sounds a bit neater um, and sort the levers out and stuff. Um, and then we'll have a quick listen to how it sounds in context. All right, so I'm gonna go through the rest of the track now and lay down some other ideas I've got for backing vocals. Uh, then I'll do a simple mix and send that off to the producers to give them um, an idea of what um, ideas I've had and then we'll go and do um, the final recording uh, for the final track um, later down the line, which you should be able to hear somewhere within this article. Well, I hope you found this series enjoyable and informative and have maybe got a bit more confidence to try music technology out for yourself. I know it's given me um, more confidence from a technical perspective to um, sort of try more things out and it's opened up more avenues for me um, creatively, practically and it's also made me more efficient um, in the job I do as well which is great. So if you want to develop these skills a little bit further I really recommend lynda.com which is a really great resource. There'll be a link at the end of this article for you to check out and thanks very much for watching.